Okay. Hi, I'm Dr. Castanet, and I'm going to explain to you uh, how we treat herniated discs here at Backstrong Clinic. Let me show you a model first. This is supposed to represent a normal spine. This is the back of the spine, this is the front, these are the discs in between. The discs are like shock absorbers between the vertebrae. The discs are made up of two components, a tough outer fibrous ring and then an inner gelatinous component. This outer fibrous ring tears over time as a result of physical demands, postures, uh, accidents, injuries, and genetics plays a role in this process also. But uh, <clears throat> over time, tears can accumulate around the periphery of the disc and the outer fibers. That can permit, the, uh, using this model I'll show you now, it can permit the migration of the gelatinous component, here seen in red, out through the tears and towards the back of the disc. Unfortunately, what exists in the back of the disc behind the potential tear and herniation is nerve roots. The herniation is just a, um, an egress of the gelatinous component outside the disc and uh, there are nerve roots behind there. So if there were a nerve root right here, it would get pinched by the disc that's herniated out here, put pressure on the nerve root. Nerve roots are very sensitive to pressure. They become inflamed and they become painful. These nerve roots in the lower back radiate down your buttock, thigh, and leg. So a disc herniation in the low back that pinches a nerve can give rise to pain down the distribution of that nerve, which means down your buttock, thigh, around the hip area, and below the knee on occasion. Anywhere in that distribution, you may experience pain, tingling, numbness, um, and weakness associated with the nerve root that's pinched. In the neck, a pinched nerve as a result of this uh, disc herniation will cause pain initially in the shoulder area here, then in the shoulder blade area. It can cause pain down to the mid-back area, and lastly, down the arm to the hand. You could experience pain, tingling, numbness of the hand, weakness of the muscles, and it can affect reflexes. Uh, occasionally, um, disc herniations will also affect the spinal cord. That's unique to the neck because the spinal cord doesn't exist in the low back. It stops short of the low back. But in the neck, it can give rise to spinal cord related complications also. In any case, the way we treat disc herniations in the neck or back is first non-surgically whenever possible. And the best approach to do that non-surgically is to treat somebody with what we call spinal decompression treatment. Spinal decompression is a table that is similar to the old-fashioned traction but much more sophisticated from an engineering standpoint. It's more comfortable. We place somebody on a table. We secure them to the table. The table then gently distracts this, these vertebrae to get pressure off of the nerve. It reduces the size of the disc herniation, encourages it to go back in this direction. That explanation is a little simplistic, but that's still generally what's happening. It improves the environment um, of the disc itself so that the disc can repair and that cell, so that cells within the disc can make the molecules responsible for repairing the disc. Um, it also gets pressure off of the joints when we distract the vertebrae. So for all the potential pain generators in the neck or the back, uh, distracting it will tend to improve a disc herniation and um, improve the symptoms of pain in the neck and shoulder in the case of the neck or in the case of the low back, the back, buttock, and leg pain. Um, spinal decompression in my 26 years clinical experience, including working with orthopedists, physical medicine doctors, physical therapists, um, and physical uh, or physician assistants, has been the best clinical tool I've seen for the treatment of herniated discs in the neck or the back. I also work very closely with a neurosurgeon. Um, I think he's among the finest in Atlanta. So when surgery is appropriate, I'll explain it to you, and I'm happy to make the referral. Um, I also work very closely with pain man management. Sometimes pain management in the way of uh, epidural steroid injections are uh, beneficial. That is not usually necessary, but sometimes it is. And I might add that for the treatment of herniated discs, Often if you've been treated with surgery or um, pain management, spinal decompression and our physical therapy approach 
uh, benefits most people after they've had surgery and um, pain management that either didn't suffice for their pain or that they've had previously and they've had a recurrence of pain perhaps uh, from a disc problem at a different level in the neck or back. Thanks very much.